Hello everyone, I'm Alex Dykes, and as promised, we are out here taking a look at the 2016 RAV4 Hybrid. This is the first full hybrid available in this compact crossover segment since Ford left the market with their Escape in 2011. In case you're wondering, that really doesn't include the XV Crosstrek, which I really consider more of a mild hybrid, not a full hybrid like we're seeing in the RAV4. The Crosstrek is also considerably smaller, and it really is more of a lifted hatchback than a true crossover like we're seeing in the RAV4. Because we recently looked at the refreshed 2016 RAV4 in a different video, this video is going to be a little bit shorter than normal, and it's going to be focusing mainly on the differences between this hybrid and the regular RAV4. That means that if you're looking for my usual in-depth review on the vehicle's exterior, interior, etc., I encourage you to click on over to that full review on the RAV4 and then click back here to this sort of hybrid supplement to know more about the hybrid model. The first thing to know about the hybrid RAV4 is that it comes only in two trims. We're taking a look at the limited trim right here, which means we do have these full LED headlamps. There's also an XLE trim, which is sort of the midline trim in the RAV4, and that comes with halogen headlamps. This isn't just one of the most efficient compact crossovers out there, it's also one of the largest at 183 and a half inches long. This is a decent amount larger than something like the current generation Hyundai Tucson. It's not quite as big as the Nissan Rogue, but it has a cargo area that's just about as big as a Ford Edge in the back, and that really is what separates this from those smaller entries in this segment. When it comes to ground clearance, the gasoline-only RAV4 gets 6.1 inches of clearance between the lowest portion of the body and the ground. Now that does take into account some of the aero treatments going on on the vehicle, like the front air dam, etc. For some reason, the hybrid model actually increases the ground clearance up to 7 inches, which makes this compete a little bit better with the average compact crossover out there. Toyota keeps the exterior changes very minimal on the RAV4 when you go from the gasoline-only model to the hybrid model. We really just get some additional hybrid badging, as well as the all-wheel drive badging on each side of the vehicle. Obviously, the biggest change is found right here under the hood, because the regular RAV4 gets only one engine. It's a 2.5-liter four-cylinder engine producing 176 horsepower. The hybrid model also uses a 2.5-liter four-cylinder engine essentially borrowed from the Toyota Camry hybrid. This engine, coupled with the three electric motors in this drivetrain system, produce 194 system horsepower and right around 206 pound-feet of torque. Now the engine itself produces 150 horsepower and it uses two electric motors inside this transaxle case to get you that 194 horsepower, just like we see in the Toyota Camry. Now in addition to that, we also have a third electric motor in the back because e-all-wheel drive is standard. This hybrid system not only improves performance dramatically from the base RAV4, it also drastically improves fuel economy. The regular RAV4 gets between 25 and 26 miles per gallon combined. This vehicle gets 33 miles per gallon combined. Your ears were not deceiving you. I did say this was an E all-wheel drive system. That's because the electric motor in the rear produces 67 horsepower by itself, but there is no mechanical connection between the rear wheels and the front wheels in this vehicle like we see in the regular RAV4. And that's a very, very important distinction. The gasoline-only RAV4 has one of the most capable all-wheel drive systems in this segment, because you can electronically lock the center coupling that joins the front axle and the rear axle together. When the clutch pack is engaged, assuming no wheel slip, power is going 50-50 front and rear. That system augments the regular behavior of the all-wheel drive system, and it allows you to get out of sticky situations that you just couldn't get out of in many other crossovers in this segment. It also means that under certain circumstances, it is possible for that RAV4 to send almost all of the engine power to the rear wheels, and that would be whenever the front wheels slipped. If you had the traction control off and the front wheels were just spinning and spinning and spinning, but the rear wheels had traction, the vehicle can send nearly 100% of the power to the rear wheels. That's not happening in this RAV4, because 67 horsepower is all the power you can get to the rear wheels. Because there is no mechanical connection between the front and the rear, there is no mechanical lock feature. There's also no feature to try and send more power to the rear. You just have to trust in the vehicle's electronic systems. That means that this all-wheel drive system is going to be considerably less capable when situations get sticky. Now, this is still going to be more capable than a two-wheel drive vehicle. That means that while well, the regular gasoline RAV4 comes in second in this segment only to the Jeep Cherokee and only in those Cherokees with the top end all wheel drive system, this particular model actually comes in below most of the entries with regular all wheel drive. So we get that Cherokee, we get the regular RAV4, we get all the other crossovers in this segment with standard all wheel drive, then we get this particular vehicle. But again, it is still going to give you more traction than a traditional front wheel drive car. 
The interior is essentially the same as the regular RAV4, which means these seats are among the more comfortable in this particular segment because our limited model has a two-way adjustable lumbar support. Now you'll only find that in the limited model, the XLE model does have a manual seat and no lumbar support. The XLE model also gets fabric seats and this particular model has Toyota's Softex imitation leather. Toyota has a lot of practice when it comes to building hybrids, and they're getting better and better with packaging. There really is no difference in the rear seat in the RAV4 hybrid versus the regular RAV4, even though there's actually a portion of the battery pack right here under the seat. You can actually see this little vent right here at the bottom of the seat. These rear seats still recline, and of course, they still flip and fold forward, so you can put large cargo into the car. The rear seat legroom and headroom is definitely a high point in the RAV4. I still have about two inches of headroom here, and I have a decent amount of legroom sitting right here behind myself. When it comes to cargo capacity, the gasoline-only RAV4 has an enormous cargo area. It's about 33% larger than the average entry in this segment, and it's sized just about the same as the Lexus RX 350 or the Ford Edge. It actually is quite a large cargo area. Even though this cargo area shrinks a little bit down to just over 35 cubic feet, this is still a decent amount larger than those gasoline-only competitors. The most surprising thing with this cargo area is how little impact the batteries actually have. You'll notice we have this small bump up here in the rear cargo area. That is due to the battery and the cooling system. However, we can open it and you get a teeny tiny amount of storage. There's actually a tire iron right in there. Now, if you were expecting the RAV4 Hybrid to skip a spare tire, so was I. However, we will both be pleasantly surprised because you will still find a compact spare tire right here under the cargo load floor. The interior is largely the same, except that, of course, we get a power gauge replacing the tachometer right over here on the driver's side. The Entune infotainment system gets a different display, which is this typical energy monitor. And of course, since all RAV4 hybrids are all-wheel drive, it actually shows you the status of the rear electric motor in addition to the front electric motors. You'll find the last difference right down here below the controls for the climate control system, and that would be this EV button, the Eco Mode button, and the Sport button. These do control the way the hybrid system behaves. Aside from that, we do have the same interior as the rest of the RAV4 lineup. So we do have the Softex leatherette stitched portion of the dashboard here, hard plastics aside from that. And then we do have a traditional shifter. So you don't find a Prius-like shifter. This is exactly the same one that we find in the regular gasoline RAV4. The biggest difference between the gasoline RAV4 and the hybrid RAV4 is that the hybrid is considerably faster. And that may surprise a few people, but remember this does have nearly 200 horsepower and that is definitely more than you find in the regular RAV4. We also have considerably more torque thanks to the electric motors. Zero to 60 acceleration comes in at 7.5 seconds, and that is nearly a second and a half faster than the regular gasoline-only RAV4. That takes the RAV4 from being one of the slowest entries in the segment to being one of the faster entries. If you want to go faster than the RAV4, you will have to get something like the Escape with the 2-liter turbo or the turbocharged Subaru Forester. Now, the Escape with that 2-liter turbo is going to get much worse mileage than this RAV4, and it's only going to be about 3 tenths of a second faster. The Subaru Forester is nearly a second faster zero to 60 than this. It does have a CVT. However, the fuel economy is not as good as we find in this hybrid. The biggest thing to know about the RAV4 is that this is not a true CVT. And we do find true CVTs in some of the other hybrids out there. So this does not actually drive like a Nissan Altima or a Nissan Versa or a Honda Civic. The RAV4 hybrid, like the Camry hybrid, truly drives more like an EV. And it's all because of the design of this drivetrain. The car cannot move without the traction motor being involved. And the traction motor actually is quite a large and powerful motor. All you really need to know is that you will not find any of that kind of rubber bandy feel that you get in the Nissan products or even some of Toyota's own traditional CVTs. And that would be when you lift your foot off the accelerator pedal and it feels like you're still accelerating for a while. When it comes to braking, we ran from 60 to 0 in 126 feet, which is quite short, but I'm going to have to drop the braking score down to a B for this model, and the reason for that is all about the feel. The transitions between regenerative braking and friction braking in the RAV4 are very well polished for a hybrid, however, it is still a hybrid, and you do still have those transitions to worry about. So sometimes when you're switching from moderate braking to more of a panic braking style, so you're already slowing down for traffic ahead of you, they start slowing down even faster, so you really have to press the brake pedal more. It will feel a little bit odd in this vehicle because it seems like there's a slight delay and then the brakes bite a little bit more aggressively than you might think. However, the wide tires that we get, especially in this limited trim, definitely help the actual braking distance. And again, 126 feet is quite short. Even though we do have those 235 with tires on our limited trim, handling could be a little bit better. The one thing I did notice sort of anecdotally is that this vehicle feels like it has a slightly better weight balance than the regular gasoline only RAV4. I have not been able to verify that, but it does sound logical because of course the battery pack is in the rear. 
When Toyota hybridized the RAV4, they did make some suspension changes, and those suspension changes dropped the ride score down to a B. You will notice a difference between the XLE and the Limited trims in the RAV4 because the Limited RAV4 gets 18-inch wheels and tires, and that means that we get a little bit less rubber between you and the road, and that does result in some more of the bumps coming through the suspension than you find in the XLE. The difference in the ride is most noticeable out here on this gravel road. It's really the smaller imperfections in the road surface that are more noticeably felt through this suspension than you find in the regular RAV4 suspension. Large imperfections like you'd find out on highways when you're running over expansion joints or over large bumps, those are soaked up just about as well as the gasoline-only RAV4. Of course, this suspension does have an extra inch of ride height, and that does play into some of this a little. In terms of cabin noise, this scored 71 decibels, which is a little bit quieter than the regular RAV4. That's largely because of the hybrid system. When we're out on roads like we're on right here, the engine is not spinning terribly quickly, and sometimes it's not even spinning at all. That does make the cabin quieter. The regular RAV4 disappointed me in terms of fuel economy, but things are very, very different in this hybrid model. Whereas the regular RAV4 was sort of middling in its fuel economy average during our tests, this exceeded every other model out there and by a wide margin. Now obviously fuel is not terribly expensive at the moment, but keep in mind that not only is this the most fuel efficient entry in this segment, but it's now also one of the faster entries in this segment. Again, 0 to 60, 7.5 seconds, averaging 34 miles per gallon. This really is the fuel economy and performance unicorn in this small crossover segment. The Mazda CX-5 does get very good fuel economy for a non-hybrid entry in this particular segment, but it doesn't perform quite as well as this hybrid. It goes 0 to 60 about 2 tenths of a second slower, and even though the fuel economy is excellent for an entry in this segment, it is going to be about 7 miles per gallon below this in real-world driving. If you've watched any of my videos before, you'll know that in general I am a fan of hybrids, and that includes the Toyota RAV4 Hybrid. The RAV4 Hybrid is only $700 more than an all-wheel drive comparably equipped gasoline-only model. However, of course, if you're taking a look at the front-wheel drive model, this is going to be about $2,100 more than that. Now, in my head, I would say that the adjusted cost difference between the two would actually be around $1,500, because again, this all-wheel drive system is not as capable as the all-wheel drive system that we see in the regular RAV4. On the flip side, of course, we get greatly improved performance in this vehicle. It takes a full second off the 0 to 60 time, and that's a major difference. It actually takes the RAV4 from being one of the slowest entries in the segment to being a among the fastest entries. The hybrid system benefit is readily apparent here because not only do we get that improved performance, but we also get greatly improved fuel economy. We've been averaging over 34 miles per gallon during our week with this particular RAV4. And this week has been a little bit different for me because I have been driving here from my mountain home down to sea level and back again, which is a series of relatively short mountain trips, and that normally destroys a vehicle's fuel economy. This vehicle has been excelling in this particular driving situation. The RAV4 gasoline model, I did spend a decent amount of time on the highway, and that normally improves a regular gasoline model's fuel economy, and it scored actually below the EPA test scores. That means that in my tests, this vehicle beat the regular RAV4 by nearly 50%. I admit that fuel is not terribly expensive in the United States right now, so the actual cost of operation difference between this and the regular RAV4 is relatively small. However, again, we do get that improved performance. Interestingly enough, you should also expect improved reliability. You may be thinking to yourself, how can a hybrid be more reliable than a non-hybrid vehicle? The reason is all down to Toyota's hybrid system. This hybrid system is not like the hybrid systems that we see in Hyundai models or Infiniti models or basically any of those other hybrids out there other than the Ford and Toyota hybrids. This hybrid system is ridiculous in its simplicity, actually. There is one planetary gear set, not three or four, that we see in a normal transmission. There isn't even a reverse gear in this transmission. All that we have is an engine, that one planetary gear set, and two electric motors up front. If the car wants to go in reverse, it simply spins the motor backwards. The high reliability that we see in Toyota's hybrid system largely comes down to the fact that there are so many fewer parts inside this transmission. There aren't even bands or clutches like we see in a traditional automatic. The solid-state hybrid drivetrain electronic components tend to be very, very reliable, and Toyota even sticks with their more reliable nickel-metal hydride batteries in the back than the trendier lithium-ion batteries that we see in some of the competition. All of that packaged together means that this should be a very reliable vehicle in this segment, and I expect it to actually beat the regular RAV4 when it comes to reliability, dependability, and likely maintenance costs in the future. 
The tricky thing, of course, is that there is very little direct competition for the RAV4 Hybrid because nobody else makes a hybrid in this segment. However, this is where Toyota's aggressive pricing comes into play. Because as I said, this is only about $700 more expensive than an all-wheel drive RAV4. This means that when you compare this to an all-wheel drive competitor, the RAV4 comes in very, very well priced. A Honda CRV comparably equipped with its regular gasoline engine will actually still be a little bit more expensive than this RAV4 hybrid. That means that if you're looking at the CRV in mid or top end trims, the RAV4 will deliver you more power, better fuel economy, and a slightly larger cargo area for hairless money. Compared to the Ford Escape, the RAV4 will obviously still be larger, just like the regular gasoline-only model. Even though we lose a little bit of cargo area in the back, the RAV4 still has an enormous cargo hold compared to that Ford. Now, the gasoline versions of the RAV4 and the Escape are very comparably priced, and that means that the RAV4 Hybrid will be a little bit more expensive than the comparable Ford. Mazda's CX-5 is one of the more fuel-efficient entries in this segment, but to even approach the fuel economy that we see right here in this RAV4, you do have to get the base 2.0-liter engine, which is the slowest 0-60 to 60 time in this particular category. You also can't get that 2.0-liter engine with all-wheel drive. You do have to step up to the 2.5-liter engine in the Mazda. Of course, the fuel economy definitely drops. The CX-5, the Tucson, and the Ford Escape are the best handling options in this particular segment, and that is one area where the RAV4 Hybrid really falls behind a lot of the competition. In hybrid trim, the RAV4 weighs nearly 4,000 pounds, although this is lighter than the closely related Lexus NX. Likely because of the increased weight, Toyota has tweaked the suspension in the RAV4 Hybrid. I don't care for it quite as much as I do the regular RAV4. This comes across as a little bit less refined, we still get the same sort of body roll in the RAV4 Hybrid that we see in the regular gasoline model, but overall, imperfections in the pavement seem to interact with the cabin just a little bit more than that regular RAV4. Now, some of that could be the tire choices that we see on this RAV4 Hybrid, but I suspect that an awful lot of it really is the suspension. Even though the Lexus and the Toyota are very, very closely related, they're not the same vehicle. And that means that while they share certain crash structure designs, certain overall hard points in the vehicle, they're not the same car. They don't share any sheet metal, they don't share any glass with one another. Personally, I think the Lexus Hybrid is worth the cost increase over the Toyota RAV4 because you do get the opportunity for things like real leather on the inside. I think the overall look is also more premium than we get in the RAV4. Now, is the RAV4 a better deal than the Lexus NX? Unquestionably, the answer is yes. But is the Lexus NX a better vehicle overall than the RAV4? Also, unquestionably, a yes. My bottom line with the RAV4 Hybrid is that if you're shopping for the XLE or the limited trim, you should just spend the extra and get the hybrid model. It's faster, it's more efficient than the regular RAV4, and there are very few downsides for the average driver. 99% of all-wheel drive shoppers will notice very little difference between this and the average all-wheel drive entry in this segment. It's also important to remember that in inclement weather, especially in snow, your tires have an awful lot more to do with the way the car handles than the all-wheel drive system. Because all-wheel drive, in general, does not get you around a corner any faster. That's where your tires come in. All-wheel drive systems don't improve your braking either. Remember that if you put snow tires on this vehicle and you put it on an ice rink, it would run circles around a regular RAV4 with all-season tires on it. Thanks for taking the time to check out this video. Be sure and check out the full review on that 2016 RAV4. You'll find that on my channel as well, or of course down there in those suggested videos at the bottom of your screen, and I'll see you next week.